today we will have a presentation by Dr. George uh, Luis Sillare, who is a senior researcher at CEF, and he holds a PhD in agricultural economy from the University of Göttingen, and he's coming from Brazil. And he will speak about food sustainability standard and agriculture cooperative and implication for the small farm sectors of Cote d'Ivoire. So, Georges, if you want, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Arthur. Uh, let me share the screen here. You can see it, right? Yes. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, well, yeah, uh, thank you, Arthur, for the introduction and uh, thank you for the ones uh, who are watching. Uh, so today we'll present the work that I was doing uh, in the University of Göttingen in the last uh, three years. Um, and this was part of my PhD research. And more specifically, what I'll do here is to present the main takeaways of two of the papers that I, pre that I prepared um, as part of this project. And the topics on uh, the relationship between food sustainability standards and agricultural cooperatives. And I'm focusing on the small farm sector of Cote d'Ivoire. So uh, that's uh, smallholder cocoa farmers. <clears throat> so to give you uh, the outline of this presentation, so I'll start by giving you a brief introduction on the topic and motivating uh, this whole project. Uh, then I'll explain to you how we did the sampling uh, and what kind of data I ended up collecting. And then I'll talk about some uh, methodological issues uh, that are relevant for both papers uh, that I'll be talking about. And then I'll move to the, to the two papers. Uh, in the first one, uh, titled Do Sustainability Standards Benefit Smallholder Farmers? Also, when accounting for cooperative effects, I'm looking more at traditional economic outcome variables. And then the second one uh, is focused on um, agrochemical uh, inputs. And I'll finish some uh, conclusions and mentioning some limitations of these, uh, of these studies. Um, okay, so why do sustainability standards matter? Uh, well, what we know uh, is that sustainability standards are really growing in importance for pretty much all of the main tropical commodities. And what standards usually do is that they reduce information asymmetries uh, related to credence features. And when we are talking about sustainability standard, uh, these features are related to sustainable agricultural practices. And what we see is that consumers are actually willing to pay higher prices for these, uh, for this kind of product, for products that are produced uh, sustainably. So there's an increasing demand for this kind of products. And of course, this is from the demand side uh, and from the supply side, what you see is that uh, sustainability standards actually have a potential to, to impact uh, development, rural development and, and rural poverty. And actually these standards are support, supported by several development agencies as strategies uh, to foster rural development. So there is uh, quite a lot of public uh, money from developed countries specifically uh, that goes into this kind of products to support uh, sustainable certification. So of course the main question here is uh, if sustainability standards work, uh, to what extent these standards are actually delivering on their promises. And in the last 10 years or so, there has been uh, quite a lot of studies that tried to address exactly this question. And what we see in the literature is that uh, several papers find uh, positive effects um, for smallholder farmers. So these effects are in terms of higher income, uh, higher prices that farmers receive for the certified crop, uh, better nutrition. Uh, some papers have looked at child education and others also reports that uh, uh, certified farmers are more likely to adopt uh, sustainable agricultural practices. 
So this is all very good, but uh, this is not always the case. We also see in the literature uh, quite a few papers that report that certification has uh, no effects for household, for smallholder uh, household uh, farmers, uh, or in some cases even negative effects. So we see uh, papers that report that certification uh, does not have an effect on household income nor prices. Some papers have pointed out to this trade-off between environmental and socioeconomic outcomes. Depending on what kind of uh, standard we're looking at, uh, we might face issues of lower productivity. And there is also some evidence of no effects for um, hired laborers. So uh, there's clearly some mixed evidence in the literature. And some recent papers, they have hypothesized that maybe one reason for this mixed evidence is that there might be some institutional uh, factors that are not really being taken into consideration in um, these studies. And what I will focus here is institutional heterogeneity at the cooperative level. Uh, so just to explain to you what exactly I mean by this, uh, what we usually have is that uh, certification has some benefits for farmers, especially in terms of uh, access to better markets, uh, access to better prices, uh, access to more and training inputs, etc. And all of these have an impact on um, several different socioeconomic and environmental outcomes. But this is not the, the full picture, right? Because in the small farm sector, several of these farmers, they are organized into agricultural cooperatives. And farmers also derive benefits from being members of these cooperatives. Through their cooperatives, farmers also get uh, access to better markets, uh, they receive higher prices, they receive dividends, they have access uh, to more training inputs, etc all of which, again, have an effect on these outcomes. But the important link here is that in the small farm sector, certification uh, very often happens through these agricultural cooperatives. So it's fair to assume that if and the extent to which farmers benefit from certification uh, will depend on how these standards are managed at the cooperative level, uh, which then of course will depend on how exactly these cooperatives are organized. Uh, so uh, on the one hand, uh, certification, uh, the effect of certification will happen through these cooperatives and certification itself will also benefit the cooperatives. And on the other hand, uh, we can also hypothesize that the, the better cooperatives or the better organized cooperatives are the ones more likely to become certified in the first place. So there is some fairly complex relationships going on here uh, that previous studies have not really uh, taken into account. And one reason why they have not taken this into account is because of how these studies were designed in the first place. So let me illustrate this to you. Um, imagine that these circles here are all cooperatives in any given study area. And here we have uh, the farmers members of each cooperatives. What previous studies have done is that they uh, often get one certified cooperative, then one non-certified cooperative, and then they randomly sample uh, a bunch of farmers from each one of these cooperatives. Uh, now, this kind of study design has some problems. Uh, one, we usually don't know uh, much, if anything at all, about these cooperatives. So papers uh, only rarely describe these cooperatives, describe what kinds of cooperatives these are, what kind of features these cooperatives have. Uh, so we, we don't really know if these cooperatives are even comparable to begin with. But even if these cooperatives are indeed comparable, 
uh, because we're dealing here with such a small number of cooperatives, uh, we cannot be sure th if these cooperatives are actually uh, representative of the other cooperatives in the study area. Maybe these cooperatives are um, very special, they have some special features that might be driving the effects of these studies. So what I did in my uh, research was to design the project in a slightly different way. So again, imagine that these are uh, cooperatives, right, in the study area, and these are all farmers, members of these cooperatives. Uh, what I did was that I randomly sampled uh, several uh, certified cooperatives, and then I randomly sampled several non-certified cooperatives. And then at a later stage, I randomly sampled then a few farmers from each one of these cooperatives. Now, uh, this study setup has some uh, clear advantages over what has been done previously. Uh, one, because I am randomly sampling these um, cooperatives and I am randomly sampling a relatively large number of cooperatives, uh, I can't be sure that these cooperatives are uh, representative of the other cooperatives in this study area. So this study design uh, already increases uh, significantly the external validity of the, the study. And two, because I am capturing here uh, a lot of institutional heterogeneity at the cooperative level, in my analysis, I can uh, actively control for this institutional heterogeneity uh, to see what that does for the effects of certification. So by taking into account in the analysis institutional heterogeneity at the cooperative level, I am uh, also improving the internal validity of uh, my analysis. So the data that I used, uh, the data that I ended up collecting uh, was from Cote d'Ivoire, more specifically from the southeast of the country. And I collected this data between April and June of 2018. And I got data from 50 cocoa cooperatives. Uh, half of those are certified and half are non-certified. So I got data from 500 farmers, so 10 farmers from each cooperative. And then I also got data on workers. And here uh, I'm talking about two different kinds of workers. So farm workers and cooperative workers. Uh, farm workers are the uh, laborers that are hired by the farmer who's the owner of the land. So to work on the cocoa plots. And then cooperative workers are the ones who uh, work at the cooperative headquarters. Um, doing administrative work or maybe transportation, weighing cocoa, etc. So these are uh, the three groups of respondents that I have in the data sets. Now the methods. Uh, in the two studies that I will present, I rely mostly on a regression analysis of the following form. So I have uh, outcome Y for cooperative I uh, for sorry, for household I in cooperative J in district K, and then I regress this on um, FT, which is my variable of interest. This is a treatment dummy, so either one if cooperative J in district K is fair trade certified and zero otherwise, and then I additionally control for a vector of households and farm characteristics a vector of cooperative characteristics, which again, I can only do because of the way that the study was designed because I have all of this cooperative heterogeneity uh, captured in the data set. And I additionally control for a set of district dummies uh, to take into account possible uh, regional differences in terms of uh, infrastructures and service provisions. And then we have uh, an error term. And how exactly I'm going to estimate this equation uh, will, of course, depend on what kind of uh, outcome variable that I have, uh, but I will talk more about this when I go to the uh, details of uh, each one of the two uh, studies. 
but uh, of course, an issue here is that uh, certification is not uh, randomly assigned to these cooperatives, right? Uh, on the one hand, cooperatives self-select themselves into certification, and on the other hand, uh, farmers self-select themselves into certified cooperatives. So there might be some issues of endogeneity here. Uh, so to explain to you how I built my identification strategy, uh, first it's important to point out that um, the, my treatment and control groups are very, very similar in terms of observable characteristics. So this is already a very good start. And in all models, I always control for um, proxies for unobserved factors related to the personality of the head of the household. So I always include a survey measure of risk aversion and a survey measure of trust. And then, as I mentioned before, I'm also always controlling for some cooperative characteristics uh, to capture this institutional heterogeneity that would be otherwise present uh, at the cooperative level uh, and might create problems if we do not control uh, for that. Uh, and on top of all of this, I'm using um, estimation techniques based on instrumental variables. And then, of course, to use these techniques, I need um, some valid instruments. And here I'm using three different instruments. Uh, one instruments defined at the cooperative level and two instruments defined at the household level. So the first instruments uh, that I'm using is the cell phone network provider of the leader of the cooperative. Um, to give you a little bit of the reasoning behind these instruments, what I see uh, in the study area is that there are basically three cell phone network providers, um, Orange, MTN, and Move, and these providers are very, very similar in terms of the services that they provide and uh, the costs. Um, however, there are some economic benefits of communicating with people from your own network, right? It's usually cheaper. And what I observe in the data is that there is a correlation between the leader of the cooperative being subscribed to the network Orange and that cooperative being uh, fair trade certified. So it's fair to assume that uh, within the Orange network, there is a much more intense flow uh, of information about fair trades and about certification going on than in the other networks. So if a leader is uh, subscribed to the Orange network, he or she is much more likely to uh, end up receiving information about certification and try to get certification for the cooperative. And the instruments at the household level um, are related to social capital. So the first one is the share of certified farmers in a five kilometers radius from each one of my sampled farmers. And the idea here is very straightforward, right? So the more certified neighbors that I have, the more likely I am to learn about certification and to uh, decide to switch to a certified cooperative because I'm gonna learn about all of the benefits. And similarly, the other instruments, the distance to the closest certified cooperative. So again, the closest I live uh, to a certified cooperative, the more likely I am to learn about the benefits of being a member of a certified cooperative or the benefits of uh, working for a certified cooperative and try to, um, so I try to be a member of that cooperative. And because we always have more than one instrument for only one endogenous variables, I always run a test over, over identifying restrictions. And then I cannot uh, reject the hypothesis of uh, exogeneity, which suggests that the instruments are, um, are indeed good uh, instruments. So to move to the first uh, paper, as I mentioned, this one I am looking at uh, more traditional economic uh, outcome variables. And in this paper, I am discussing uh, this issue of what does it mean to take into account cooperative heterogeneity in the analysis of the effect of sustainability standards for smallholder farmers? So the two research questions that I am addressing here are one, if uh, farmers benefit economically from certification, also when we start taking into account these cooperative effects, 
And two, I'm going to discuss uh, to what extent ignoring this institutional heterogeneity can lead to omitted variable bias. Uh, so the three outcome variables that I'm considering in the study is uh, variables that, are ver that you very often see in studies about uh, certification. So yields, uh, in this case cocoa yields, uh, then the price received uh, from the co-op for HKG of cocoa solds, and as a measure of welfare, I'm using daily household consumption expenditure uh, per capita. So. In this table, uh, this is what I'm showing here, are uh, correlation coefficients uh, between cooperative characteristics, certification, and my outcome variables. Uh, so basically what I want you to uh, pay attention here is that several of these cooperative characteristics, they are simultaneously correlated with certification, so my variable of interest, and with the outcome variables. Uh, so this already raises a red flag that if I ignore these cooperative characteristics in my analysis, I might be running to problems of um, omitted variable bias. Um, and here I'm going to show now the results of the regression analysis. And so here I'm always estimating OLS regressions and uh, two stages uh, IV regressions. And so first I am estimating these models without taking into account in the model uh, the cooperative characteristics. So I'm not controlling uh, for cooperative heterogeneity there. And what we see is that certification uh, does have a statistically significant and uh, positive effect on all three of my outcome variables, uh, which is of course a uh, very good news. Uh, but what happens to these estimations when I do include uh, some cooperative level controls? Well, here uh, there are two things to consider uh, or to take note. One is that uh, farmers is still seem to benefit from certification, uh, although here in the AV estimation for uh, expenditure, uh, we do not see a statistically significant result. Uh, but uh, for yields and price, we still see um, a significant effect. Uh, but interesting is that, especially for yields, we see that the magnitude of the coefficient uh, changed quite a lot, uh, which means that when we do not take uh, these cooperative characteristics into account, we are actually underestimating the effects of, um, of certification. So this would suggest that uh, if we do not uh, include these variables in the model, we could be running into um, some biased results. Uh, so the main takeaways here are that uh, farmers indeed seem to benefit uh, from certification, uh, also when taking into account cooperative effects. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, it seems that if we ignore this cooperative heterogeneity in the analysis, uh, we could lead to omitted variable bias. Uh, which means that um, the studies should really start paying more attention to how cooperatives uh, in their data are organized and try to get data on uh, how exactly uh, these cooperatives are organized, what kind of features these cooperatives uh, have. Uh, now to move to the second study. Uh, here in this study, I am going to focus on agrochemical input use and uh, associated effects uh, on human health and on the environment. And now there has been uh, quite some studies in the literature about certification that have looked at the effects of certification on agrochemical input use. Uh, however, these uh, studies have uh, some shortcomings. Uh, First of all, these studies very, very often they uh, are using data from farmers who are, for example, fair trade and organic certified. Um, and this is problematic because uh, organic certification, of course, completely bans the use of chemical inputs. So 
although these uh, farmers are both fair trades and organic certified, the results are not really saying anything about the effects of fair trade certification since the organic certification completely bans it. Uh, and two, what I noticed is that these studies, uh, they tend to only consider quantities of uh, pesticides and fertilizers being used. And this uh, can be misleading because um, there is quite a lot of differences, right, uh, between uh, pesticides. Pesticides vary quite a lot uh, in terms of how toxic uh, they are. So I'm also taking into account uh, pesticide toxicity in my analysis. Uh, so these are the research questions that I am uh, going to analyze in this study. Uh, one is if certification causes uh, changes in agrochemical intensity use among smallholder farmers. Two, I want to see if certification uh, affects the overall toxicity of pesticide use and if it affects uh, human health among both farmers and rural workers, so those two group of workers that I mentioned earlier. And three, I also want to look uh, at uh, what happens at the cooperative level, right? What kinds of uh, services, training, and inputs related to agrochemical use these cooperatives are offering? So comparing that uh, this service provision uh, between certified and non-certified cooperatives. And the outcome variables that I'm looking at here is, uh, so first the quantity of uh, fertilizers and quantity of pesticides used in kilos per hectare. And pesticides, I'm combining the data for uh, insecticides, fungicides, and herbicides. And again, as I mentioned, this is what uh, the other studies have used, right, as their outcome variables. Um, so what I'm doing here is that I additionally use two different indexes uh, to capture aggregated uh, pesticide toxicity. So the first index that I use is the environmental impact quotient. That's an index that uh, it has been uh, used quite often in the literature, especially in integrated uh, pest management and GMOs literature. And this uh, multidimensional index, it captures um, toxicity across um, various dimensions, so toxicity and, uh, in terms of uh, the environment and for human health, and even for uh, consumers uh, to some extent. And the other index that I'm using is the hazard quotient. And this index uh, is more limited in, the, in what it's capturing. So it's capturing only mammal uh, toxicity. And now how exactly these indexes are uh, calculated, I can talk about this later in case you're uh, interested. And then when it comes to human health, uh, what I'm looking at is the number of pesticide-related acute health symptoms uh, for both farmers uh, and workers. And for this, I'm using a, a list of symptoms that, that is uh, often used uh, in the literature. Uh, so now to go to the uh, results of the regression analysis. So when I look at uh, agrochemical intensity use and toxicity, I'm estimating the models using uh, a double hurdle models and using a control function approach uh, to take into account uh, possible endogeneity issues. So here what I'm reporting is both the first uh, and second hurdles and always reporting uh, marginal effects. Uh, so to start with fertilizer, what we can see here is that certification uh, increases the, the probability that farmers will adopt um, fertilizers by 18%. However, um, certification does not have any effect on the quantities of fertilizer that farmers uh, end up using. And what we see for pesticides is actually the opposite. So certification does not have an effect on the probability that farmers will adopt pesticides, but it does affect the quantities of pesticides that uh, are applied. Uh, and this is not really surprising in that study area because uh, cocoa is a crop that suffers from a lot of different uh, pests and diseases. So it's quite common that uh, farmers use pesticides 
uh, regardless of uh, certification. So uh, no surprise that there that uh, there is no effect on the probability of adopting pesticides, but uh, certified farmers uh, probably have more access to inputs and probably better means to purchase inputs themselves, which of course leads to uh, more pesticides being applied to the fields. Uh, now for toxicity. So uh, again, these are double hurdle models with control function approach. And I'm um, uh, again showing first hurdle and second hurdle and marginal effects. Uh, starting with the environmental impact quotient, uh, what we see here is that certification does not have uh, any effects uh, on, on EIQ. So certification does not uh, affect uh, at all uh, toxicity when we use this index. However, uh, it does have uh, an effect when we use the hazard quotient. And in the second herd, as we can see here, both the conditional marginal effect and the unconditional marginal effect, we can see here uh, an effect size of around 40% uh, when we compare these to the mean values of non-certified farmers. So this is a quite a substantial effect. Uh, and you might ask yourselves, well, why do we see effects uh, using one index and not when we use the other index? Well, this has to do with how exactly uh, these indexes are built and what's being considered uh, in these indexes. So as I mentioned, the environmental impact quotient uh, is a multi-dimensional index. And what the, they do is that for each active ingredient, they calculate one uh, environmental impact quotient, which is then uh, summed up to form the final indexes, index. While the hazard quotient uses what we call uh, LZ50, so the lethal doses 50, which is the minimum doses required uh, to kill 50% of uh, any given population that we're uh, interested at. Uh, so basically, LG50s uh, that have a smaller number are more toxic, while EIQs uh, that have a higher number are more toxic. So for example, we see that for some of these active ingredients, and here I highlighted one, uh, there's a big difference uh, because we see that, so uh, carbendazine is quite toxic when it comes to EIQ, but it's not at all toxic when we take a look at the lethal doses 50. Um, so this is possibly the reason uh, why we see effects using one index but not the other. Now to move to the health effects, uh, these are just some descriptive statistics, uh, disaggregating by farmers uh, and workers, and these are some of the symptoms that I'm using in the analysis. So my outcome variables is a count uh, variable of uh, all of these uh, symptoms under consideration. And what this, we see here is that uh, non-certified farmers and non-certified workers seem to suffer a lot more from pesticide poisoning uh, than their certified counterparts. Uh, now to go to the regression uh, results. Uh, here, this, um, this regression I'm estimating using an IV Poisson model. And what we see is that a significant effect of certification in uh, reducing the number of uh, health symptoms reported by both farmers and workers. Here I'm pulling the data from both farmers and workers uh, in this analysis. Um, so uh, what we see here is that although certification seems to increase uh, the quantities of pesticides used and also the overall levels of toxicity, uh, it's also reducing the number of health symptoms that, uh, that respondents are reporting. Uh, and this probably uh, has to do with uh, what kind of services uh, these respondents have access to uh, in their cooperatives. So uh, here in this graph, uh, this is also very descriptive, right? And these uh, numbers on top are uh, p-values. So I'm doing two different kinds of comparisons here. First, I am comparing uh, the non-certified cooperatives with the certified cooperatives. And then I am comparing the certified cooperatives uh, before and after uh, they got the certification. And for this, of course, I'm uh, using uh, recall data uh, because uh, I have uh, cross-sectional data. 
So what we see here is that when we compare non-certified cooperatives with certified cooperatives, uh, we see significant differences across pretty much all of the services under consideration here, except for uh, provision of uh, fertilizers. Uh, and when I compare certified cooperatives before and after certification, I also see significant differences across all of the services that I am uh, considering. And one interesting thing here is that if we look at the data from non-certified cooperatives and compare with the data from the certified cooperatives before certification, these are uh, quite similar, right? Uh, so this would suggest that uh, certification actually led to these cooperatives uh, offering more services to, to their members. So the main takeaways here is that uh, one, uh, fair trade increases uh, pesticide use and aggregated toxicity, but reduces incidence of acute health symptoms. Uh, and two, I would say that uh, simplistic assumptions about how certification affects uh, health and health and the environment uh, might be inappropriate because there are a lot of mechanisms, especially at the cooperative level, that might influence uh, if and how um, certification affects uh, these dimensions. Uh, so now to um, go to the end of this presentation. Uh, the main conclusions here is that, uh, one, it's important to notice that cooperatives are highly heterogeneous. Uh, so, as I said, I have uh, 50 cooperatives in my data set, and cooperatives are highly heterogeneous, not only between certified and non-certified cooperatives, but also uh, within their own group. So, even inside the group of certified cooperatives, we see a lot of institutional heterogeneity and inside the group of non-certified cooperatives um, as well. So um, this means that really we should avoid uh, working with a limited number of cooperatives when we are uh, studying the effects of certification because given uh, such heterogeneity, uh, the study might actually suffer from um, limited external validity. And what we see is that certification does seem to have some socioeconomic benefits in the small farm sector of Cote d'Ivoire. Then these benefits happen uh, through some rather complex impact pathways, um, most of which uh, happen through these uh, cooperatives and how these standards are managed at the cooperative level. Um, however, although uh, both studies uh, do have rather positive findings for certification, I would still argue that sustainability standards are not a silver bullet for all the problems uh, of the cocoa sector. Uh, the cocoa sector, as you might know, uh, has so many different problems in terms of pests and diseases, child labor, uh, climate change. So um, sustainability standards on their own are not going to solve all these problems. So there's a really need of uh, working with uh, local stakeholders to promote um, public policies to, to improve the sector. And cooperatives uh, are an important entry point uh, for interventions to improve all these outcomes associated with sustainability certification. And so future studies so future studies should really uh, take uh, into account this cooperative heterogeneity in the, how they, they are designed and also in the analysis. Uh, but of course, these studies have um, some limitations, right? Um, first of all, although I am arguing here that uh, my results do have increased uh, external validity, still the estimated uh, effects might be specific uh, to Cote d'Ivoire, right? Which is a country that does have a very particular uh, organization of the cocoa sector. Uh, second, of course, I'm uh, using here cross-sectional data, which uh, really limits uh, the options that I have for identification. Uh, for example, uh, reverse causality between how certification affects cooperatives and how cooperative characteristics might affect the likelihood of adopting certification. This might be a concern. So of course it would be much better to build a, a panel on this data to use more uh, robust econometric techniques. 
another issue is that there might be some heterogeneous effects of certification across different types of cooperatives. So this is something that I did not look uh, into. I think uh, it would be very important to see exactly what organizational setups uh, better uh, enjoy all these benefits from certification. And two, uh, although I do use some data from workers in my studies, I feel there is uh, still a need for uh, studies that take into account other actors along the value chain. So studies that more uh, actively look at workers, traders, and processors. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention. Looking forward to uh, discussion. <laughs>